the liver is a fascinating organ. It is central to human metabolism and has powerful self-healing properties, but it is also an organ that is prone to disease. Michael Manns is a professor at the Medizinische Hochschule Hannover and a leading expert in Germany on the liver. For years, he and his team have played a large role in developing the groundbreaking medication-targeting hepatitis C. Currently, around half a million people in Germany are infected with the hepatitis C virus. Left untreated, those affected often suffer from an inflammation of the liver and scarred liver tissue, which can often lead to liver cancer. In Germany, hepatitis is the main reason for a liver transplant. This, however, could soon find an end, thanks to the continuous basic research of Manns and his colleagues on the liver. Manns also focuses on finding cures for other liver diseases of different patient groups, such as those with inherent metabolic disorders or the so-called fatty liver disease. In Europe, one in three children is overweight, making the fatty liver the most common chronic liver disease of the future. This is why we have to actively look for alternatives. For instance, we could temporarily treat patients diagnosed with acute liver failure using stem cells and stem cell therapy so that a transplant would no longer be necessary. The same applies to genetic liver diseases, for which we would only need to restore certain functions of the liver. That would already constitute a major improvement. To achieve this, Munz relies on the collaboration between basic biological research and clinical trials. He works with stem cell researcher Tobias Kanz, whose focus lies on finding new methods for liver regeneration. On the one hand, we try to understand as best as possible how the liver would develop under normal biological circumstances, and then try to transfer this knowledge while cultivating livers, or better liver cells, in the tissue culture dish. This includes that we use specific growth factors, so-called cytokines, and develop reagents, which can modulate the fine regulation of the gene expression and subsequently the cell characteristics. MicroRNAs, which are non-coding RNA molecules, are also very important for this process. Currently, we're trying to use all the accumulated information to differentiate the cells into becoming the most mature and functional phenotype possible within a cell culture dish. The advantage is that we'll be able to use the patient's own cells, so it's no longer necessary to administer drugs that suppress a possible liver rejection. This is one of the biggest drawbacks of a total liver transplant. The benefits of cell therapy are apparent. In the case of acute liver failure, stem cell therapy would be used to bridge the time up to the organ transplant ideally only a few days or weeks. So it would not constitute a problem if the cells cease to function after that period. The cell therapy has more of a prolonging function. When an organ is transplanted, it's there permanently, along with all the consequences, including the required immune suppression. This is also true for genetic liver diseases. Repeatedly transplanting cells instead would replace the function of the defective gene, thus eliminating the need to transplant the organ. But it's a long road to creating these induced pluripotent stem cells and then differentiating them into three-dimensional liver cell tissue pieces for transplantation. Our goal is to cultivate functioning liver cells within the laboratory. To achieve this, we often work with components that are not visible to the naked eye. So ultimately, we work with nutrient solutions, RNA molecules, and transcription factors. Components which we know are needed and yet are invisible. This often makes it hard, especially for younger colleagues, to maintain their motivation during longer phases of a project. But that's simply part of research. Ultimately, it's about refining the cell culture or differentiation conditions in order to create new ways to generate functional liver cells from pluripotent stem cells. Another approach requires converting the connective tissue cells within the patient's scarred liver tissue back into functional hepatocytes. To accomplish this, the scientists are currently using their knowledge of stem cell programming to develop new methods. And so far, our studies with mice have shown that this transformation is indeed possible due to a cocktail of four specific transcription factors, and that we can successfully convert these myofibroblasts into functioning liver cells again.